Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Greetings from Cybertron, your source for all things Transformers, especially the old stuff. Now, I am Phil, and joining me as always, Matt. I'm Shadama Fadafas. I am here. <laughs> With a mouthful of Reese's Pieces, that's what that's a reference to. Okay. I don't know. Now you travel. Yeah, Shadow Madafas means that I traveled a lot of a lot of number of miles for Reese's Pieces. Three hundred sixty-nine billion. Billion, ah, damn. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so yes, I'm here with young Mr. Macona. Who? Hmm. So if. If you were a Transformer, would your name be, I don't know, Hyundai Kona? <laughs> Hyundai Kona? Hon- is it, does it Hyundai have like a uh, Kona? I, th- I think some kind of like SUV or something. Oh, uh, maybe. I'm, I a, I'm pretty sure, yeah. I would definitely not. Tra- I would be one of the ones that transforms into an item. Oh. <laughs> maybe a Walkman <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would collect the tapes. That's how I would, I would foil Ravage. I would um, I would turn into a Walkman and eat him. You know, one of those that you you can't even rewind it. You have to turn it to the other side and hit fast forward. <laughs> that would be my special power. And I I would be Wise Cracker. That would be my name. Nice. <laughs> now you have to answer. Now you have to. That was just that was just off the cuff. Now you gotta think of your vehicle first. Maybe a clever name after. I don't know. I've always wanted to fly, so maybe like a plane or something. Uh, yeah. Are know. there any? Are there any helicopter transformers? I mean, not that we've seen so far. Not pretty- yet, but yeah, later on they get to somehow. I think they have at least a helicopter or two. Yeah, I think there's at least one Autobot and one Decepticon helicopter. But yeah, flying is cool. I I I'd some to, I think about flying. I thought about flying the other day. I saw birds, and I thought, you know, must be nice. That's Must right. Nice. My oh. is like, I would like to take a big poop on somebody's car. <laughs> yeah, no. I, <laughs> I want to be a water bird. That's what I want. Oh. I want to poop on someone's boat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. That's, All right. what, that's what sets me apart. What a great start. I was going to say, should we get to this issue? Speaking of flying, oh. the cover yeah. we, we see Shockwave and Megatron battling over a helicopter. Yes. The U.S. Air Force helicopter, and Spider-Man only appears in the co- in the uh, corner box. <laughs> yeah, I got a, a new Transformers action figure though. It's the uh, issue three um, Spider-Man black costume. Oh, cool! Not not really Transformers, just Spider-Man happens, happens to be that one. Yeah. <sighs> Cleaning up the house. Don't know what to do with this. L- lack of space. But <laughs> all right, so all right. Ready to jump into this? Yeah. Hmm. Ceremonial coin flip. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going. What? See who starts it off. Yeah. Do you have the Harvey Dent coin? Yeah, I do. Nice. You want you want good side or bad side? <laughs> uh, I'm feeling good today. I'll I'll go good. All right. Let's see. Oh, it's good. Uh, okay. All right, I'll start it off. So he, he see he's from New England. People, he, he didn't even have to cheat. <laughs> no, no, and there's no coin flip controversy here. <laughs> <laughs> In the wind churned waters off the coast of Oregon stands this oil drilling platform, a gleaming steel testament to man's unceasing struggle to conquer nature. 
This platform is touted as the most productive and technologically advanced ever built. And we see a certain shockwave flying by in the background as some workers in hard hats pulling chains, working hard on the on the drilling platform. And those are facts in which the roustabouts who work long and hard take justifiable pride. Those are facts of which they want everyone everywhere to know. Today, they will discover that one too many knows. As you see shockwaves starting to land, I, shockwave, claim this facility for myself. And the, the workers are very startled. They didn't expect that to happen before lunch break. Yeah. All right, and looking out the window at Chalkwave, we see uh, Tony Stark. I mean, GB Blackrock. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Tony Stark. Cross- cross- he does. With and like, he's a, a billionaire industrialist, a millionaire. Industrialist. Uh, some kind of chain around his neck. Uh, yeah. Tony Stark, on. Tony Stark with a mullet. Uh, <laughs> Red button up. That's something that Tony Stark would wear. Yeah. He's, he's looking out the window and saying, what the... And I guess they're responding to Shockwave. You want one? Build it yourself. <laughs> uh, less than an hour ago, multi-millionaire industrialist GB Blackrock ba- bragged about his new platform in a live television newscast. So see, people like last issue was le- less than an hour ago. Yeah. Little did he suspect that not everyone listening to him in the v- in the viewing audience was human. Uh, and that was last issue. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, I don't know what it is, but shoot it down. Activate perimeter defenses. GB's orders echo throughout the rig via intercom. And the response is immediate. Swarms of single man hovercopters surround the invader. Meanwhile, deep within the infrastructure of the platform, Josie Beller, the computer wizard who designed most of the rig, operates the main control center. And she hears, fire up the automated weapons, Josie. Already doing so, Mr. Blackrock. The mortar cannons are taking aim, right? Oh, now the worst of two evils. That's the title. As if performing a precisely choreographed dance, the hovercopters and automated weapons all fire in blazing unison at their target. And you see these uh, kind of mini open air helicopter hovercrafts by these uh, employees of GB Blackrock. I can only assume the GB stands for. Uh, Gloney Blark, but, um, and they're they're pelting them with it. Crack, zip, zip, zam, clablam, crack, zip, zip, zip again. But the total effect of the awesome torrents of artillery on Shockwave is as a fly swatter hitting an elephant. And then we get some credits. Bob Bediansky with the script, Alan Cooperberg on the art, Rick Parker lettering. Nell Yamtov coloring, the guy who provided us the editor's note on the page before, Jim Owsley, and editor in chief, Jim Shooter. And as they're, the humans are attacking, Shockwave says, Humans, your actions seek to delay my reign. I have no time to trifle with you. Heed me now, or feel the wrath of Shockwave. With unbridled fury, high energy gamma ray beams flow into the rig again. <laughs> Just dumping hovercrafts in its wake. Uh, and now I will attempt to find which way to the creamy center of an Oreo chocolate sandwich by uh, completing this maze. Or I'll turn the page. And again, Brzak! as you see, the onslaught continues. And again, Wapoom! GB Blackrock is uh, contacting me on this very little walkie talkie device. It's Josie! He's cutting us to pieces. Uh, the wire guarded surface to air harpoons. Fire them now. And we see Josie, who we met on the telecast in the previous episode, I believe. Mm-hmm. Target is sighted and harpoon launch is commencing, Mr. Blackrock. And so she starts shooting harpoons, which are still bound with wires out of them. The <laughs> from the sides. <laughs> And they hit in. They hit shockwave. As he goes, arg, 
Although a robot, Shockwave is alive and the pain of the harpoons ripping through his armor plate is real indeed, but not enough to stop him as he pulls the entire section, I guess, where the harpoons came out of. As it breaks off the crack. And the helicopters are still firing on him. I've got him lined up now. Let her rip. And he says, humans, you have been warned. There's no logic in continuing your attack. And a tremendous burst of light explodes out of Shockwave's gun barrel, splinding all the men flying near it until none remain afloat. We see him hovering over the, the what's left of the oil rig, still with a piece of uh, piece of it still hanging off him. Yeah, two two uh, soldiers are just floating on there on on top of a door or a piece. I think it's one is named Rose, one is named Jack. I, I was going to say, oh, oh, you beat me. I was going to say, oh, Kate Winslet and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. <laughs> and then we see in the darkened office, GB Blackrock now kind of looks like Dr. Doom, but uh, not Dr. Doom, Dr. Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> the haircut and the glasses, but this is GB Blackrock. I hope everyone can hear me. We've lost. Take all necessary steps to abandon the rig. And we hear from the radio, Mr. Blackrock, I'm staying till we beat this thing. It's your it's your rig. No one can take it from you. I don't care about this rig, Josie. Please listen to me. And as you see, um, Shockwave kind of snaps at some of his attackers. And you hear the voice of Blackrock say, uh, we have no time to waste. As the last of the uh, of his Troops starts to crash down upon the employees. The falling debris sets off a chain reaction of electrical malfunctions throughout the rig. We see Josie getting lit up in an electrical shock, screaming, Aye! <laughs> Josie, what's wrong? 90 seconds later, he goes down and sees Josie's body smoldering. Oh no, Josie! Fire surrounds them, wreckage everywhere. Hang on, Josie. I'll get you topside. And but what awaits GB Blackrock? There is a sight he finds both awesome and horrible as Shockwave transforms from his space gun mode to his robot mode. As he's standing there in front of them, I shall allow all of you who remain to return to the mainland so that you may act as messengers to your fellow humans. Tell them the new era is here. The conquest of your planet by the Decepticons began today. Uh, but meanwhile, nice and uh, accurate, 146 miles away, <laughs> deep within Mount St. Hillary, inside an alien space vessel, the Ark, is Megatron, recently deposed leader of the Decepticons. He hangs suspended in a life support network that is repairing his recently suffered injuries. He finds the radio transmission he hears now as unwelcome as his present condition. As I guess he's getting all the Decepticons are getting a transmission from Shockwave. This is Shockwave. All nominally functioning Decepticons are to depart at once for this facility. Coordinates are being relayed directly to your Cerebro mapping centers. As <laughs> Megatron thinks Shockwave has triumphed. And worse, Cerebro. <laughs> and. Yeah, Megatron is thinking to himself as he sees his uh, his former underlings being taken away or leaving on their own accord. The Decepticons obey him as if to mock me before my own optical sensors. Sound wave, rumble, and frenzy transform and board Skywarp and leave. His, his hand is starting to move finally. He's been laid up for so long and his anger is just powering him through Tra traitors all of you shall live to regret this day all of you particularly you shockwave <laughs> i love how it looks like the decepticons are glowing when they transform now <laughs> yeah i don't know if shockwave gave him an update to their system that makes it more dramatic when they turn <laughs> funny might be a trick of the light. Who knows? Uh, but meanwhile, elsewhere in the arc, <laughs> we see Buster, as we saw at the end of the last issue, come across the head of Optimus Prime. He's thinking, it's Optimus Prime. The other Autobots are all prisoners down the hall. And in here, the head of the Autobot leader is held helpless. The head is held helpless. Ooh, is that three times? 
Alliteration. Come on, yes. Buster. And Optimus saying, you hold the fate of the Autobots in your hands, Buster with Wiki. Only you can save us from the Decepticons. And Buster saying, but how? You're the strongest, bravest Autobot of all, and they beat you. What can a kid like me do? And he says, step forward. You must trust me. Of course I do, Optimus. He says, you must trust me. You must do what I ask of you. Oh. I wonder, um, what, I wonder what Power Pack and Spider-Man have to say about that. No. Okay. <laughs> all right, keep going. going. <laughs> he says, I promised that I wouldn't get involved with the Autobots anymore after I said goodbye. Last issue. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, Lee, we know it was the last issue. <laughs> uh, he says, but I, meanwhile, he came to the Ark. I'm, I'm not going to have anything to do with the Autobots anymore. Yeah. But I've got to. Optimus needs me. He says, you name it, Optimus. I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> Optimus says, disconnect from that console the two wires that lead to my forehead. Sure thing, Optimus. What are these wires for? There is no time to explain. You must hurry. Yeah, okay. Uh, press each terminal against either side of your forehead. We will be in mind link. And he's thinking to himself, I'm sorry, Dad. And he does it, and boom! He's a regular, it's a regular Josie. I know, eyes. I was going to say, people are getting zapped left and right in this issue. I know. <laughs> a powerful electrical charge surges through Buster Whitwicky's brain. The pain is momentary but intense. A sun-like brightness turning to black as black is the last image he sees. As he collapses to the ground, the a little bit of flames licking out of his shirt. Hmm. Uh, but then... Outside. Outside the cave entrance to Mount St. Hillary, an ambulance is parked, hidden by the brush. But there is more than meets the eye here. Take a drink. For this is Ratchet, chief medical officer of the Autobots. He is also the sole Autobot yet to be captured by the Decepticons. As he's thinking, where's Buster? He should have returned from his scouting mission by now. If anything has happened to him, I... And, but then he sees Shockwave. Shockwave! He lives! But how can this be? Last I knew, he was still on Cybertron four million years ago. <laughs> uh, what's four million years between friends? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, details of his arrival on Earth were revealed last issue. And he's saying, and he's thinking now, and now he flies toward the Ark. This doesn't look good for the Autobots or Buster at all. And I can't think of anything I can do but wait. And inside, we don't see it, but off panels, uh, Shockwave must have transformed back into his robot mode. Yeah, he walks over to Megatron. I trust your condition continues to improve, Megatron. Says, yes, Commander Shockwave. And Shockwave says, good. All functioning Decepticons will be needed at our new base. Even as we speak, Soundwave, Skywarp, Rumble, and Frenzy are repairing it. With the oil drilling platform ours, we now have a base that is both defensible and a dependable source of fuel. Two goals that the Decepticons so abjectly failed to achieve while under your leadership, Megatron. But it is, log but it is logical to turn our vision away from the past and toward the future, is it not? And Megatron, yes, Commander. <laughs> Shockwave, I'm glad you see things my way. Now I must attend to other matters. And Megatron's thinking, all I see is the wreckage of your charred and shattered body, Shockwave. And I see that very, very soon. Yes. And you see the angry hands of Megatron finally breaking through his his his, uh, his wire confines. Yarg! Meanwhile, and we see, speaking of wires... Buster Witwicky, face down, still holding one of the the wires that he just pressed against his forehead at the urging of just ahead of uh, <coughs> Optimus Prime. Don't He's grab, still, don't grab live wires even under peer pressure, please. <laughs> no, use your use your head, not someone else's. He did use his. Well, <laughs> so he's saying, I don't know how long I've been lying here. But I've got to get out. Tell Ratchet what I've seen. <laughs> After dizzily navigating his way through the labyrinth arc and out of the cave, Buster, you've returned. What happened to you? Are you functioning properly? 
I'm not sure what happens to I'm not sure what happened to me, Ratchet, but it's not important. Optimus Prime is in there. He's a prisoner. And all the other Autobots, they're all dead. Just like the cover of last issue. Ah, as if you did, <laughs> if you get, a, get the point last issue. <laughs> <gasps> they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> But we're not even going to get uh, to ponder that for a second because inside the arc, we see Megatron is broken free because Shockwave hears a voice behind him. Shockwave! And he turns around and says, what? And we see Megatron pointing his arm in his uh, fusion cannon right at Shockwave. And he says, you are relieved of command. Shoots him away with a raccoon. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the force of the blast from Megatron's fusion cannon sent Shockwave flying for miles over the Oregon landscape. Ooh. Uh, until he lands by slamming into a high school football stadium in the valley below. What the heck is that? As we see all these football players scatter, uh, some barely making it out from underneath the, I, I guess, the ceiling of the. I don't know. It's a. It's in an indoor stadium. There's definitely, oh, maybe it's the bleachers maybe. that he, that he kind of landed on. And, um, you know, the Valley Mont number 69 says, I don't know, but I hope he's not playing for DeForest High this Saturday. And the coach, let's get out of here. Uh, minutes pass until nearby. I see Megatron kind of confidently got his swagger back, <laughs> stomping on the cars in the parking lot, making his way over. You cannot hide from Megatron. I come to crush whatever life remains within you. Again, narrowly missing uh, a football player who probably doesn't play that well. He doesn't even have a number, this guy. He just runs fast. Yeah. But then as he's moving forward, he says, I will. Ugh, and he gets hit by uh, debris that Shockwave throws at him that knocks his uh, Decepticon emblem off his chest for that panel. <laughs> As he get, as he gets hit by debris in the name of a band, <laughs> wham! Boom! George Michael with the uppercut. <laughs> uh, Shockwave says, "More life flows through my circuits than you can ever crush, Megatron. You are a fool to attack me." And it looks like Megatron saying this, but I think it would make more sense if Soundwave or Shockwave was saying this, because it looks like Megatron saying. At your full strength, you are less than me, and you are not at full strength as he shoots at him. But it would think Shockwave would make more sense for Shockwave, because I'm pretty sure Shockwave's at full strength. Yeah. Unless mm. his harpoons took more at him than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> no. They were drugged! <laughs> <laughs> and then, after we flip over a page of a reference to a joke I made earlier, uh, your wounds are not fully healed. Pain still racks your being with every move. And uh, and that's Shockwave busting down the water, the water tank. The, the clearly, it's a Valamont water tank, the town's water supply apparently. Mm -hmm. and, and he uses it as a as a club to Megatron. Your reaction time is but a fraction of what it once was. By every measure, I am your superior. I am your superior. That is why you shall lose this battle. That is why I command the Decepticons. Complain. Ugh. Crack. No. I am commander of the Decept. And I guess his, uh, thanks to his open wounds, uh, we see a big shock to Megatron as the water hits him. And Shockwave says, your unhealed wounds left you vulnerable to short-circuiting from the water you unleashed, Megatron. Your own misguided... We still see him sparking. As Shockwave standing over your own misguided actions open the doorway to your doom. <laughs> now I shall close it. <laughs> As he transforms back into a gun. Yeah, and you see the the sight of the gun focused on Megatron. Blast him. And, uh, Megatron is. <laughs> Blown into a crater of what I guess used to be the this part of this town, and mm -hmm. and he's uh, shockwave just picks up the limp, disoriented body of Megatron 
and, and Megatron's kind of muttering, and uh, I beg you, Shockwave, spare me the humiliate. No, I could tear your head from your body and reduce your re- remains to molten, worthless slag, Megatron. But logic says you have significantly greater value to me alive than dead for now. And then we see Shockwave just like throws Megatron into a building. Is that like a house, maybe? Yeah, it looks like some shingles. It kind of looks like a a house that could have got blown down by the big bad wolf. It's like a straw house. He throws I, into a, a tiki hut at this Washington high school. I don't know. I could just imagine like this house is one of the only buildings that remained intact. Then Shockwave just like throws Megatron through it, and people are living there like, "Hey, he was beat. You didn't need to fall into a house, dude." Insult to injury. Yeah. Because uh, Shockwave throws him through the house, says, Your demise shall come at a time of my choosing, not yours. And Megatron's laying there thinking, Letting me live is worse than any pain that you can inflict upon me, Shockwave. You shall yet suffer for this indignity. You shall pay. And later, we see Shockwave carrying Megatron back into the Ark as Buster and Ratchet are still hiding in the. Uh, bushes as Buster says Shockwave carrying Megatron back to the Ark and it looks like Shock just trashed him but Megatron is the Decepticon leader stronger and nastier than any of the others and Ratchet says I find it hard to believe myself Buster but I'm afraid it matters little which of these two de- two leads to Decepticons either one spells doom for the Autobots inside the Ark and uh, <laughs> You know, Shock, Shockwave has just kind of plopped down Megatron, whose legs are all akimbo, and he's KO'd for sure. Decepticons, before you is the shattered, ruined body of your former commander, Megatron. Now a barely functioning mockery of the power and cunning the Decepticon warrior should be. Examine him closely. Consider his fate. His is the fate shared by all those who oppose me. One by one, each Decepticon turns his gaze towards Megatron. A visible shudder stirs each mechanical form like a passing wave. He continues as he, uh, to address them. All of you, Laser Beak, Buzzsaw, Thundercracker, Starscream, and Ravage have recovered from your injuries. Are you of sound operating levels? I ask you to weigh carefully your response to what I ask of you now. Swear to me you resolve to conquer this pathetic planet. Swear to me you shall put no other before me. Swear to me your allegiance absolute and eternal. And on the next page, they do, as they all in unison, Hail Shockwave, the Septicorn Commander Supreme. Does that come with pepperoni? Uh, <laughs> we function for you and you alone. And we see Megatron uh, muttering that same thing in the corner. Hail, Shockwave, Decepticon Commander Supreme. I function for you and you alone. Meanwhile, two souls, one organic, one mechanical, huddle together seeking comfort from the, the despair that begins to fall over them, like the evening chill that settles on the mountainside. <laughs> a really poetic ending. The, mm-hmm. the evening chill. And then in the next page we see an advertisement for Fred Hembeck destroys the Marvel Universe. Way ahead of Cosmic Ghost Rider in that regard. <laughs> Shooter command. I love Jim Shooter's wearing a uh, overcoat and like a big uh, fedora on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like Inspector Gadget before Inspector Gadget. I know. I think this is pre-Inspector Gadget TV show 85. I don't know. I feel like Inspector Gadget was late 80s. Let's see who can find the Inspector Gadget Wikipedia. <laughs> Brain. Where's Brain and Penny when you need them? 83! <laughs> okay, oh. maybe not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Septem- the se- first premiered September 12th. Yeah, 1983. Wow. Oh, you can even watch it on Tubi TV, which is a free service, so. Tubi, okay. It's like a it, it, it's a website. How do you spell Tubi? T O O B E E. No, it's like tube, but it's T U B I. Oh, okay. I like that. If they if they get some old nostalgia shows on there, and yeah, they also have movies, which uh, 
yes, for uh, Super Connectivity episode 200, scroll way down, we uh, reviewed a, uh, uh, what is it, this, uh, Blitzkrieg Escape from uh, Stall Log uh, 69, starring our own Charlie Esser. Uh-huh, nice. Where he plays like a Nazi commander. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's pretty. But there is some play. nudity, so adults only, please. Adults only, yeah. Huh. Well, I'm intrigued. Not so to just can... jump from the poetic nature of this to getting sidetracked about Inspector Gadget jokes and Charlie Esser <laughs> and nudity, but hey, I'll uh, investigate. But this is really picking up. The things are, uh, there's a big fight in this issue. There's tension, despair. Oh, yeah. We're one, not- one Autobot that hasn't been decimated. It's and So you're still feeling it, huh? Yeah. Trust me, as the series gets on, it gets bigger and bigger, buddy. Just wait. Yeah. Eventually, we'll, we start uh, bringing in more Transformers and more Transformers. So. Yeah, you got Dinobots coming. Mm-hmm. All right. So anything else, or should we uh, break? No. In? I uh, I don't have anything else. I did, uh, you know, have a great time digging through... The bins, and I found a bunch of stuff at this uh, the Hampton Beach show, nice, and including uh, f- finishing my Headmasters set. So, uh, I don't know. Nice. When, whenever that happens, I'm looking forward to it. So. And yeah, uh, I'm going to try to reach out again, but I would like to get a hold of someone at IDW, maybe get give us some review copies of the current series, so we could do do old and new stuff here. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Free advertising people, come on. Go go on both sides of it, yeah. That's right. Anyway, so if you want to get a hold of us, uh, discuss old Transformers, uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Greetings from Cybertron, at Greet Cybertron on Twitter, and the voicemail, of course, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38capes. And Matt Kona. You can find me online at Matt Kona, M-A-T-T-K-O-N-A. I am occasionally telling jokes in the city nighttime, the city of Boston, the city nighttime. What am I saying? Um, so come see me. Say hello. We could talk Quasar. We could talk Transformers. We can. 2099 books. Yeah. 2099. Let me know. I'm looking for Hulk issues. That's like the rarest of the ones that I've seen. I haven't seen a lot seen a lot of ravage in the bins. It Spider Man I haven't seen that many of either. Hmm. I'm looking I'm looking around. I see you bins. Come to me. <laughs> I'm addressing the bins specifically. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Alright everyone. But yes, join us next week for Transformers Seven. That was actually the first book. That's for actually the first comic I ever picked up was Transformers Seven. So. Oh, that's a big in, deal. Filling the nostalgia next week, but yes, yeah. and yeah, check out Matt Kona. He'll he brings down the house with his comedy more than Shockwave even. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yes, follow us. Heck, if you if you like our forms of entertainment, check out our YouTube. We still got a contest going. Subscribe to our YouTube if we hit 100 subscribers by uh, Saturday when we do Capes and Lunatics episode 100. Someone will win a prize pack at random. We'll pick a winner. So subscribe. We're almost there. Why don't you just hit a button and you could win a prize? That's all you gotta do. Win a prize. What? Transformers Generation 1 is also available on Tubi. Ooh, so check those out. We might have to cover some of those later.